Time for another episode of Mo Mondays. And in this week's episode, we are going to look at Teams Admin Center, just the basics in five minutes. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Mo Mondays, where myself, Mo, on a Monday, will be spending around five minutes talking about another subject around Teams Rooms. And uh, as the title shows, in today's episode, uh, I'm going to hopefully spend around five minutes just giving you the basic overview of Teams Admin Center. Now, customers always ask, how do we manage our Teams Rooms devices? And there's a number of different ways. Three main ways that customers will uh, kind of manage devices are using Teams Admin Center, which is what we'll go through today, using a um, manufacturer's or OEM's management platform, or if you're using a pro license on your Teams Rooms device, then you have access to the pro portal. Um, that will save for another episode. But in today's episode, let's really do a bit of a deeper dive in, into Teams Admin Center. So right now, my device is currently just loading up the Teams Admin Center. Here we go, it's popping up. Uh, and the URL is admin.teams.microsoft.com if you want to move straight in. Soon as you're presented with this page across here, this will give you access to all things Teams on your tenant. Uh, of course, um, for today's episode, we're really going to concentrate on the Teams Rooms aspect. Um, so we are looking at this option here, which is Teams Devices. Simply hit Teams Devices, and then in a very simple format, we add the different types of devices that are available. For example, Teams Rooms on Windows, Teams Rooms on Android, Surface Hub, Panels, and of course, if customers are using Teams Phones, Teams Displays, or if you're still using SIP devices, they can also be managed here as well. I'm going to concentrate a lot more on the Teams rooms on Windows, just purely because of the time, the limited time that I have. Now, across on this screen, we will give you a glance of all the devices that are connected on, uh, on the tenant. Uh, and the good thing about Teams Admin Center is as soon as you sign into a device, it will automatically register itself on the Admin Center across here. So there's no additional agents or software or anything like that that's required. It automatically just connects up. At a glance, I can see how many devices that I have, how many are online or offline, and also what the health summary looks like. I can even see all the licenses that each device has, whether it's a basic license or a pro license. And of course, all your standard details like what the health status is, the manufacturer, the model, the display names, et cetera, et cetera, are shown here. But what happens when you tap on a device? So let's go ahead and select my device across here. At a glance, I can see um, all my peripherals are all connected. There's no critical impacts. Um, so for example, if a camera was disconnected, it would show up red and it would give me the alert to say a camera is, uh, is disconnected. Um, but also from the screen, uh, if you are ever raising any tickets into Microsoft or any issues uh, a customer may have, um, then you can, uh, and, and, and a lot of times customers or, or Microsoft will say, hey, we need the logs from the device. This is a very easy way for you to go ahead and download the device log. So you simply hit that button, it queues it up, and then it will download the logs for you. Of course, I have the ability to then do things like restart the machine as well. Um, there's a bit more you can do, especially on Windows devices. Here in the top right hand corner, um, it's a little hidden away, but the three dots, if you go ahead and you hit the three dots and then click on actions and then edit settings, this will then give you the ability to be able to actually access settings on the machine, which normally you'd have to do physically there at the machine. So all the settings that you would find things like turning on front row by default, you know, uh, looking at device settings, uh, turning on coordinated meetings, or even just switching different peripherals, you have the ability to actually access the settings and change the settings directly from the admin center instead of you physically having to be there. So a lot of times it's good, especially when you're managing customers, uh, if you need to just change a setting to turn on certain things or turn off certain things, you can do that straight away from this screen. Um, the other things uh, that I really like are these little tabs that you see here in the middle. So for example, I can see the health uh, of my device. I can see all the peripherals, are they connected? Um, is there a health impact across there? But where we differ from uh, kind of other management platforms is the ability for you to be able to also look at the connectivity. How is it connected into Microsoft? And are there any issues? For example, the tenant I'm connected to is a Teams tenant. Uh, I don't have Skype for Business, which is the reason why it says it's not applicable. But if there were any signing issues or errors, etc., they would show up across here. Down here at the bottom, it shows the software health. What is the current version of the software that you're running? But it also will give you the ability to update software if new software is made available. Now, we get asked this question all the time. Should I update from Teams Admin Center or should I update from a manufacturer's management portal? 
Microsoft recommends to always update via the Teams Admin Center. This is because all the uh, software that we have um, across here, the software version, these are software versions that are tested and certified by Microsoft. Now, in some rare cases, uh, OEM uh, management platforms may have different versions of uh, updates, and uh, sometimes they offer them when Teams Admin Center is showing a lower version. Uh, a lot of times, this is designed for <clears throat> fixing things like bugs. So if there was a camera issue on a particular OEM and they need to uh, send, out, send out a quick fix, they may host it uh, on their management platform as a quick fix to mitigate any issues. Now, <clears throat> I am starting to run out of time, but I quickly want to just spend a, a, a couple of seconds just talking about activity. If you ever have any problems or customers say, hey, you know, the call quality was really bad. Activity is the area that you would go to. Now, I will spend a bit more time on this on a future session, but I want to give you a quick overview. Um, let's say, for example, this particular call has eight participants. I'm going to go ahead, click that date there, and in an instant, I'm able to see all the devices that were connected. I can even drill down in more detail. For example, if I go across here and hit the uh, view session details, <laughs> if I can click it, there we go, right there. Um, <clears throat> this will then start giving me more information about the type of device, the type of peripherals that are connected, uh, system information, connectivity information, whether it's Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And then this is where we go one step further. We can then look at things like uh, network details. You know, what was the jitter time? What was the uh, packets? Uh, what was the uh, average packet loss, etc.? We're able to then decipher uh, a lot more information via this page as well. And even down to was the, was the service from Teams actually running? Uh, of course, across the top, we've got advanced and debug if you want to move into a lot more detail. But I'll tell you what, I will dedicate an episode where I talk about this in a bit more detail. But I'm going to end right there. That was a quick overview. Of course, if you were to hit on Android and some of the other ones, it gives you a very similar experience. But we'll say that for another episode. In the meantime, make sure you like, subscribe and comment down below.